G'day and welcome to Mark and Sam After Work. Today I want to do a really short video um, to go through and, and uh, a place to point people to when they ask a particular question or a couple of different sets of questions. Um, and the question goes into um, why do you shoot at extreme light? Why don't you shoot where you can hit the target all the time? Or are you happy? Was that a fail because you didn't hit the target? Or um, that, that's no good, that video, that extreme, or that, that shooting, that effort, or that caliber, or whatever it is, because you only just hit the target or you didn't hit the target at all in our ELR shots. So listen, it's, I think it's just simply a misunderstanding of what's actually happening. But I thought about how I could answer that, and this is what I've come up with. This target here, is what I went out and did this morning um, with a 223. So it's actually Sam's rifle. It's a little Seiko 85, set up really nicely, um, heavy barrel, good ammo, hand loads, all that sort of stuff, shoots really well. I set up this card um, and I'll walk through what I did here. So what I've actually got here is, uh, first off, I just checked everything where it was. I wanted to keep something off the target. So that was my first shot that ran, landed what I wanted to, just made sure everything was sighted. That was good. I then set about doing a group. So, started up here. This is, as you can see, a five shot group. Shot really well. First group was really good. That's the first six shots. Oh, sorry, one, two, three, four, five shots. So five shots actually shot better than its average. Um, so it was a very good group at 0.18 inch on the target there. Next group I went down here, shot a group. I did the same job. I just lowered my point of aim just a tiny bit, trying to get closer to center. Um, a more average sort of group for that rifle, 0.35, um, that shot there. 100 yards, 223, 80.5 grain burger bullets. Shot really well, nice group. Then I come across to over here. Actually, no, then I went to this shot here. I was going to, I've forgotten which way around I shot those. Um, I'm, I'm getting distracted. <laughs> this one here is actually me deliberately trying to fill up that square. So I, was, I didn't do a perfect job of filling up that red dot, but I wanted to spread it out. I wanted to show a more average group all about the conversation where I'm heading. So bear with me while I work through this. This group down here, I left on there and I only took three shots because that's three shots, 0.06. Um, I, well, it's a bit hard to measure in this sort of paper. It's certainly under 0.1, um, you know, really about 0 0.05, so 0 0.06 is what I've called it. Ridiculously small, you know, sometimes I would say, my miss is the rifle's hit type thing. It shoots a little left, I shot a little right or something or other. That is a ridiculously small group, smaller group than I can expect to, than I'd expect to see or be able to produce. But sometimes that stuff happens. Sometimes these or bigger happen as well. So you sort of take your wins when you can get them. But I left that on there for that reason and it proves my point nicely as well. And then up here was my last shot. I was actually going for dead center. It shot a tiny bit low, pretty central, but that's just one shot on there. So that's the range card for the 223 this morning. That was, I would, I would think most people would consider that a pretty decent effort. That's gonna be something they're pretty happy with. I want to point out that in an ELR shoot, when we go out and shoot things, and I'm talking proper ELR, so I'm talking two and a half thousand two and above in the way of shots with decent high power rifles for sure, but in that sort of distance. Um, and probably even going from yeah, about, about 2,500 is where I'd really consider what I'm about to say would be truth. And that is that not one of these shots, this level of accuracy, would have done the job at that distance. Not one. What am I trying to say there? Well, to hit at those sort of ranges, it isn't just a multiplication factor of MOA. So it isn't like, as most people would know, um, one MOA is one inch at 100 yards, which means it's 10 inches at 1,000 yards, which means it's 20 inches at 2,000 yards, yada, yada. Well, it isn't just that, because conditions are involved. Bullets slow down. I haven't done the maths on it, but I would suggest it's close to a multiplication factor of 10. So distance times 10. So you need to have, well, let's, let's stop talking about what I don't know. I haven't done the maths, I haven't done the averages. In years to come, I might be able to give you multiplication factors. Obviously depends on the conditions, depends on the terrain, depends on the weather, da, 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 da. depends on, depends on, depends on. But what I'm trying to say is, there's not one here in this little range card, there's not one that is the center of the center of the X. So 
when we do hit, I'm always wrapped. You know, we're always wrapped when he hit, but really what's more valuable to me is that it's just around the target. We've got a good held down group, um, especially in the ridiculous, the ULR distances. So when you're going 5,000, goodness, getting close is, that is the center of the X of the X. You've got to get more central than that to hit the target. But in your really, like I said, two and a half thousand out to, and I'm more talking to 3,000 than the two miles sort of stuff. So the 3,500, 3,700, that sort of thing. If you can get to where you are holding down something that's around a yard from the target, well then you're shooting a group that looks really more like this. That's sort of just around the target. Maybe somewhere between those two is what you're actually holding down. Hitting is the center of the X. And if you have a close look at that, which I'll put a proper image on there, you'll see that nothing, absolutely nothing gets right on that X. So my answer of Am I happy with doing that sort of shooting? Yeah, listen, I'm happy. I mean, this one in the middle, you know, I wouldn't be happy with pulling that off with that rifle. That would be, I'm having a bad day or there were bad conditions or something going on. But still, they're, they're all, it's only just over half MOA. So it's sort of average rifle, average good rifle shooting. So yes, I'd be happy with that sort of stuff. So the truth of it is, when we're talking ELR, even as much as we want to, we're producing a video, we want to show that sort of stuff. There's an extra, it's extra nice to clang that steel for sure. But if we're holding down a really close group, that's what's really important to me. That's what puts a smile on my face. That tells my engineering is working properly. Um, I need a little bit of luck to go my way. And we've certainly had days like that. We've certainly had days where we just are just missing and just missing and just missing and just missing and just missing. And for, like I said, for the shoot, it's good. For the video, yeah, I know the fans, I know people want to see the hit. So that's what drives me to get it on steel. But just keep in, in context, I suppose, what I'm trying to say, this is turning into a longer video. I'll stop talking now. But yes, I'm happy with that sort of group. And yes, I'm happy if I'm just missing, but I'm holding down a consistent group. Anyway, guys. Thanks for checking in on us. Catch you next time. Hi everybody, Sam here. If you like the video and you like what we do, it'd be great to get some support. There's a few ways to do that. Over here, there's a link to a web store which not only has our products, but it has support bits. The money from that goes directly to our channel. And we have our coffee cups. These are $30, they cost us $10. So that's $20 that will go directly into helping us bring these videos to you. Every bit of support is greatly appreciated. Thanks everybody, bye for now.